Peace, peace. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. And welcome to another day to labor in the vineyard of the most high. With your brother, another day to get in the glorious world. And see what the most I got to serve. And what we eating on at the buffet today is the return of telepathy, telethought communication, assisted by the higher thought waves, the high vibrations. All right, the high vibrations, the elevated, elevated frequency, elevated consciousness is what's going to bring about the spiritual communication network that got took from us long, 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 long time ago. All right. But it's returning because everything is going back to how it was in the beginning spiritually. All right. Aligning with the pole shift. Along with the pole shift, it's a spiritual shift. All right. So we're going to go into the keys. The keys, the keys, the keys that unlocks the spirit. And we gonna eat the book of knowledge. The keys of eating out. We're gonna start with the definition. The definition of telethought communication. Telethought communications. The mental, spiritual communication through the modulation of gravitational waves. All right. Again, the mind and spirit way of communication through the influence of elevated consciousness and elevated high frequency. All right, that's how gravitational waves mean. The keys got a un lot of unnecessary terms that could be broken down into regular language, and that's what we do to make it make more sense. All right, modulation is influence. Gravitational, which you gravitate to, waves are frequencies. All right, so we got to gravitate to the elevated consciousness, that higher frequency, that higher wave of thought. All right, let's see. We're going to go to page 120, key 112, starting at verse 84. The brotherhood of light, a.k.a. the entities on the other side of the veil, teaches the living light of love. Operating with the agape, the sacred kiss upon the third eye, which is the seal necessary to open the seed crystal of light, which is the third eye, the mind's eye, the penal gland, for telethought communication. So again, the brotherhood of light teaches the living light of love. Operating with the agape, the sacred kiss upon the third eye. Pause, I'll get a precept. Let's go to page 511. Because we can show the sacred kiss, the seal, is the eye of Horus that they put upon our minds, our area, when our vibration is proper so that they can elevate us. Page 511. Verse 20, the Elohim transfer the divine image into proper seed forms, proper righteous seed forms of the Shekinah creation, which are reprogrammed and regenerated or renewed by the eye of Haru, the eye of Horus placed upon the face or the mind of the elect who are the brothers. 
All right, let's get another precept. Let's go to page, page 223, verse 73. The dove, symbolic of the spirit, gives to the pyramid, all right? And the pyramid is speaking on right here is the body. Remember, when we was younger, they used to tell us, sit Indian style. Indian style shows you the pyramid. I don't understand nowadays this Christian cross applesauce. That just, that just, that just, the name just don't even make sense. But sit Indian style because that's one of our ways that we used to sit because that shows the pyramid. And when you see pictures of the Merkaba, the people are sitting Indian style, all right, with their legs crossed. And it sets up the pyramid. From one knee to the other knee is the base. And as you go up the arms to right here, it's the pyramid. But the only thing, the capstone has been removed. And that's what the eye of Haru is used to bring us back into alignment and put that capstone back on the pyramid. All right? So I told you the way the wordplay, the wordplay in the keys is what make it hard for us to process. You just got to bring it down. But again, the spirit, the dove, gives the body the capstone, the eye of Haru, which is used to remake the pyramid program of man into the design of the father. By connecting the eye of Haru, the eye of Horus, with the eternal eye of the living God. All right? The eye of Horus sends out radiations of light as the gateway to new dimensions through which man ascends. All right? So the mind's eye, that mind's eye network that we done read about a few times, the penal gland, it, we, we, we can't voluntarily open it ourselves. We got to reach a certain level of consciousness and righteousness and purity. So where those on the other side of the veil, because they read our colors, not our flesh, all right? As they see our aura and our chakras glowing, they know we are one of the vessels that they can cope to elevate on high, all right? And like we said, as they open us up, it allows us to connect through our mind's eye, right here, that network, with the eternal eye of the living light. All right, it allows us to connect with those on the other side of the veil so that our view of creation is shifted and it opens up a whole new reality to us. All right, and like I said, the eye of Haru sends out radiations of light as the gateway. So they send a gateway to our mind's eye, which activates us to new dimensions through which man ascends. All right, so let's go back. To page 120. So again, the entities on the other side, the brothers and sisters on the other side of the veil, teach the living light of love, operating with the agape, the sacred kiss upon the third eye, or the eye of Haru that they place upon our mind's eye, which is the seal necessary to open. The seed crystal of light, the mind's eye, for telethought communication. If the brothers of the higher wavelength of light truly walk and emanate the light, they will not reject the prophesying in the name of the Father. For they will understand the ongoing house of prophecy. Pause. This is where a lot of our brothers that's teachers get stuck. They don't understand time frames. The Old Testament was a front time frame. Kemet was a time frame. The Hindu was a time frame. The Buddhist was a time frame. Lemuria, Atlantis, they were time frames. Look at the time frame through the spirit to see how we started on a spiritual high and then it went down, all right? And once it reached down until we got to the point of the Hebrew time period, when Yahshua came to return us back on high. But after that was the complete fall of the original man and woman. And that was the shift that allowed the Gentiles to reign, to take over. All right. And now, like 
Yahshua said, Jerusalem shall be trampled down. Jerusalem being symbolic of the original man and woman. All right? The city won't trample down until the time when the Gentiles be fulfilled. It's the people. All right? The original Adamic seed is going to be trampled down until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Because the time of the Gentiles being fulfilled got to do with the awakening of the Adamic seed. Jerusalem, that holy city, which is within the holy people, is going to be reactivated. All right? And it's aligning with the pole shift that we see in creation. But brothers that don't accept all of the house of prophecy and how it's a continuation, even the Book of Mormon. All right? You got to look at the time frames. All right? The ten tribes are separated during the time. And if you look at the time frame, talk about it in the Apocrypha, where they were led to different lands. All right? The Book of Mormon coincide to where you got to go through that also. To see that time frame. Then you go through the seal book of Mormon, which got the seal book of Moses. And how he said certain lessons won't gonna be given out until a certain time frame. Alright? And you just keep going. The third testament. It tells you that the third testament is a different time frame than the first testament and the second testament. Alright? It's a different time frame. Then you go on up and you get to books like the seal portion. All right, the seal portion, it go through the same thing. It show you the time frames, how it was in the beginning, and it move on up until it get to the time frame of the return of Christ, which is Christ's consciousness, and the return of Jesus, which is the return of the entities, the chariots. All right? It's not just speaking on one person returning. No, all of the chariots coming back together. All right? And the chariots are slowly returning and being seen now. They setting up. All right, everything getting set up, but the seal portion take you through that whole spiritual time frame to show you how it started in the beginning, how it fell, and how it's going to return in the end. All right, and the keys pick up on that same thing. It's a small glimpse of the past history of how the consciousness fell and got locked into that lower vibration, but it shows how we're going to be took out of that fallen vibration and lifted back up in the end of the cycle. And that's what's going on now. But the brothers that don't have the spiritual eye to see how prophecy is an ongoing event that started way back over here in the original period, and then it got sent to the east, and then it got returned back to the west for the end of time to wake back up those in the east like it was at the beginning. It started in the west and went to the east, and in the end, the awakening starting in the west and going back to the east. To combine the whole house. Alright. But back to the word. It says. If the brothers of the higher frequency. The elevated consciousness of light. Truly walk. And emanate. The high vibration. The light. They will not reject. The prophesying. In the name of the most high. All right? They will not reject the books of light that prophesied to make them remember who they are and what's to come and the transformations to take place. But they will understand the ongoing house of prophecy, which will continue because the universe is always remaking itself in the channels of light. The universe is always remaking itself. All right? The many mansions are always being remodeled in the channels of light. All right? Let's get precepts. Let's go to page 101. Page 101 or page 100. We're going to start, matter of fact, at page 99. We're going to start at page 99. All right? Verse 20. Mantra vibrations 
raise the body of consciousness into the sea crystal mind, the mind's eye. All right? So mantras, all right? You know the mantras, all of the mantras involve the name of the creator. All right? Like y'all heard me say, heard, heard me say a lot, hi. I walk, I, I use Hare Krishna. That's my mantra, all right? Krishna was my man. That's my favorite avatar. Hare Krishna. All right? And I posted in the community section a song that a brother had made with a beat in the background explaining the mantras and the use and the divine names. All right? But when you feel the falling frequency upon you, if you use a mantra, even if it's hallelujah, hallelujah, just repeat it. All right? It does something to where that fallen entity that's trying to afflict your thoughts is gone. All right? They can't be there when you use the mantras. And even in times when you're not under a spiritual attack or your thoughts are not being infiltrated, if you just randomly chant the mantras, like we seen in the lesson where we did on Adash, Adash, Adonai, Sabaya, that's a mantra. All right? Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. It's a mantra. If, if you just chant the mantras, it raises your vibration. All right? And that's what it's saying right here. The mantra vibrations raise the body consciousness. All right? It don't only run away the falling frequencies that infiltrate your thoughts, but it allows your mind to be in attunement. All right, let's get a priest up. Let's go to the third light picture super scroll. All right, this is the third light picture super scroll. All right, mantras is one way that you can raise your vibration. If you understand how the fallen ones operate, the hooks that they put on the songs that our brothers and sisters sang, they mantras. All right? it's, a, it's a spiritual science all around creation that we've been blinded to. Hooks on songs are mantras. So when you repeat those hooks over and over in your head, you're attracting a frequency. There's a vibration that comes with it. All right? <laughs> you got to understand. When you get into the teachings about Enki and now, Enki, who is the god of the earth, which... In Christianity, they call him Satan. Like I said, in Corinthians, the god of the earth who blinded the minds, he was a mad scientist. All right? And spiritual science is the ultimate science. When you repeat them hooks on them songs, you repeat mantras. Mantras either repel entities or they attract entities, whether they are righteous entities or wicked entities. The righteous entities are going to be able to upgrade your frequency the fallen ones are going to be able to keep you in that low state to where you never reach that point to where you can connect with those in the Father universe. Or you're not even going to be able to connect with the Shekinah universe, the universe of the spirits, all right? Or the Holy Spirit, all right? It's not going to be able to guide you because of that frequency, that mantra that you constantly repeating. All right, verse 71. Through the divine names, created creativity emanates all realms of life and all realities within our sun universe. The mathematical geometries and vibrations are key parts of the unfoldment of light life, which can be seen in atomic or subatomic particles. All right, and remember when we did the lessons on the Shekinah universe, which is the subatomic particles, as well as our DNA. All right, because remember, on the lesson we did on consciousness in the DNA, how your words had to do with your DNA, unlocking and unfolding your consciousness level. All right, that spiritual DNA need that higher vibration, that elevated wavelength for it to unlock. The names are the true God code. The names are the true God code. And you see names with an S. So all of the Hebrew brothers talking about this is the right name, that's the right name. Nah, nah, they don't understand yet. They don't understand like we read in the beginning, the ongoing house of prophecy. 
All right. Any of the names of the divine is worthy. It don't matter which one you use. Asa, Asa, Allah, Krishna, Rama. It, it don't matter. Quatsakado, you call on whoever you want to call on. It's the power in that name because it's recognized as a divine name. The names are the true God code in the midst of the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden. And you have to stop thinking like the Gentiles. The Garden of Eden is not a place that they're going to find on the earth. Nah, nah, that's Gentile thinking. Everything to them is physical and carnal. Nah, the Garden of Eden was a spiritual zone that the Adam Kai man worked in that was connected with those in the Father universe where he could see the Shekinah universe. All right? So the names are the true God code in the midst of the Garden of Eden of pluralistic diversity. All right? Because they're spirits. The Garden of Eden was a spiritual zone. Everything that was created was created spiritual before it was created carnal or physical or temporal, which means temporary. All right? So the fall from the Garden of Eden was a spiritual fall which got us stuck in carnality, the physical creation, the physical realm. So the Gentiles will never be able to discover the Garden of Eden. And if they tell you that they found it, you got to automatically know they lying. And if you still think the Garden of Eden is in Africa or in America or Tibet or Israel or wherever, nah, you've been mistaken by the ideology of the Gentiles. It's a spiritual zone. They'll never be able to find it. All right. The names also work through love powered radiations. Love powered radiations, which become filled with music. Remember when we showed the Aline? All right. And how they work with the music to reveal the messages of the light. Legendarily seen as a chorus of angels. Who play on their musical instruments, creating the harmonies of the spheres. Again, the names, the God codes also work through love power radiations, which become filled with music. The mantras, mantras are music. Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. It's music, it turns into music. The mantras, Aranah, Aranah. Adonai. Nah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I said it wrong. It ain't Adonai. Oh, hold on. There it go. Sabaya. Kadash. Yeah, it's Kadash. 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 Adonai. Sabaya. Kadash. 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 Adonai. Sabaya. It turns into music, and you repeat it over and over in your mind. All right? So the names, the God codes, also work through love power radiations, which become filled with music. All right, music is vibrations. Legendarily seen as a chorus of angels who play on their musical instruments, creating the harmonies of the spheres. Throughout the sun universes, the music of the spheres become understood as the sacred names, bringing the geometries, the images, and the frequencies together. All right, so the names align you being the image with the higher vibration. As all life is vibrations. In the beginning was the word. The word is a vibration. All right, we're on speaking right now. They vibrations, all right? And that's the difference between a spiritual teacher and a carnal teacher. Carnal teachers talk to your flesh. All right? Spiritual teachers speak to the spirit within you. All right? It's a different frequency. When you talk to the spirit, man, then that frequency can change the carnal man. But when you speak to the carnal man, that vibration is not activating or being received by the spirit man. So no change can come about. But the true growth come from spirit to spirit conversation. All right? We can talk, but if my vibration is right and my science is right and exact, it gets to your spirit. 
And your spirit man will be open to where now it's going to make you change. It's going to help you renew your mind, which is a spiritual act, which is going to help you change your temple, the outer body, the actions of the temple, the things that the temple get into. All right. Because all life are vibrations. That's why words can alter the vibrations of the flesh. That's why we can go through our mind and alter our flesh. That's why we can pray over things and change the vibration. All right? With no empty spaces. This makes the names themselves, the God code themselves, the keys to the kingdom. Because it is not just the vibration of the names which fill our universe, but the who that is behind the names. The who that is behind the names. When you heard the name Allah, nah, that's the creator, the most high. Asa, nah, some people look at that as the creator, even though it's the image of man also. Just like Yahshua, all right? And even those of us that know Jesus was a brother, it's power in the name Jesus. And you can't deny that, because almost the majority of us have started off with the name of Jesus. And we seen that it was power if we had true faith. All right? When demons attack you, you called on Jesus, and Jesus delivered you from the demons. All right? But when brothers and sisters grow to the Hebrew teachers, and they get the names Yeshia and Yahweh Shai and Yehoshua and, and, and all the different names, all of a sudden, they start going back telling people ain't no power in the name Jesus because that's what the teachers is teaching them. Nah, it's still power in it because the power comes from your faith. All right, the power is in the faith that you got on the name, not the name that you use. It's brothers that use the name Jesus that got more faith and power than people that use any other Hebrew names just because their faith is strong. You can use what you think is the right name, but if you don't have faith, that name is not going to do anything for you. All right? So now, let's go back to the keys, page 99 again, verse 20. The mantra vibrations raise the body consciousness into the mind's eye, the sea crystal mind, so that it spirals out of our consciousness paradigm, the consciousness time zone that we locked in, which is controlled by the energy of the black cube. All right? Let's get that. Let's go to page 85. Let's break this thing on down. Page 85. Get a couple precepts right quick on the black cube. That falling vibration we locked in. Key 109, verse 1. Just as our living universe has a pyramid of light as the central matrix for star evolution between the universes of intelligence, so also the antiverse has its matrix of dark cubic space, which is the violation of the living light. It keeps you away from the spirit. Exemplified in the Kaaba, the black cube in Mecca. Verse 9. The sons of light, the Benai Or, have established a light pyramid functioning on this side of the veil or this end of the light spectrum in relationship to the Pleiades and Orion. Conversely, the black cube functions with Alpha Draconis. And we didn't heard about the Draconians all right, we never heard Gentiles talk about the Draconians and all that, but of course they're not going to explain it, and they're not going to tell you what it's about, so they just let us think that it's reptilians and all that stuff. But no, let's get this understanding here. Conversely, the black cube that falls in frequency functions with Alpha Draconians for the children of darkness. Let go to page 56. Page 56. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Verse 33. Thus, the Pleiades and Orion 
And remember, in, in, in Men in Black, Will Smith said the key to the universe resides on Orion's belt. All right. Thus, the Pleiades in Orion give the mathematics for every chemical sacrifice required in life from Genesis to Revelation. And at the end of our program, and at the end of our program, those who carry the image of the Lamb will be separated from those who carry the image of the bear, Ursa Major, and the dragon, Alpha Draconis. The fallen spiritual powers controlling the old linear astronomy of the Babylonian sciences forcing man to do homage to the lower heavens. All right. And if you remember, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. All right. It's the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. All right. Because the fallen forces came and locked us into a vibration. They locked the Adam Cobb man. Because this is a spiritual war. And that's what people don't realize. So when you heard them talk about the Draconians, no, nah, them spirit beings. All right? Them spirit beings that came to go to war against the Adam Cobb man. Everything is about war with the Adamic race. It's not war with the Gentiles. No. Nah. The, 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 the spiritual realm, no. Nah. The Gentiles is at war with us. But the fallen frequencies... The light beings, they at war also against us. That's why you hear about the order of Michael fighting for the Adamic Sea. All right? And that was the forces that's battling, those in the spiritual realm. All right? Because whoever controlled the Adam Kaiman, the original seed, take control over creation. All right? And when the Adam Kaiman fall and the fallen influences was able to manipulate then creation went downward. And now as we come into the end of the program and we return it back to our nature, we aligning with the order of Micaiah. All right? We fighting with them now. Now that we've been spiritually renewed and reactivated. All right? Teamwork. Divine teamwork that we've been blinded from. That go back to page 86. To say the verse 11, to say the people of the world who are under the energies of the black cube is to bring them the Torah or God's program of light. And we know the Torah or are the scriptures of light, all of them. To save the star system intelligence from negative entropy is to bring the scriptures of light from Orion in the Pleiades to teach the people of the world the love of God, the love of the sun, which is not talking about Jesus, it's talking about the image, which is us. We are the image of the sun, all right? The love of the living God the love of the image of God and the love of the Shekinah, the Holy Spirit. With this power, they can conquer the antiverse, the fallen frequencies. With this power, they can conquer the inversion of the ninth key of Enoch, which is 666, summer wolf summer. All right, 666, as we know, like the Bible teaches us the mark of the beast, but it's the mark of the fallen consciousness. All right, let's get this definition of summer wolf summer. It's the carnal consciousness, 666. Paradigms of the infamous 666 as a force of limitation and force limiting freedom of the spirit. The permutations of fallen mind energy or negation which controls the realities of spiritual evolution in the lower creation. With prayer, 
the gematria of 999 reverses the 666. All right? 999 is the spiritual man. That's the spiritual vibration. All right? But 666 is that carnal vibration that the majority of us are stuck in. All right? Now, let's go to page 100. Starting at verse 31. This key speaks of the language systems of light given by the higher evolution to the star seeds, to the star seeds on this planet to enable this seed to go through many galactic formations and transformations. And through this manifestation of the word, projected thought forms from the higher galactic kingdoms of creation materialize not only one set, but multiple sets of evolutionary kingdoms of creation. All right? And this is this is a duality to this right here. All right? Because even the fallen ones come from a higher galactic, a higher galactic kingdom, like we see it. On um, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, the big different and the little different, all right? And that's why the carnal mind can't process them. All right? Because you you don't process things outside of this consciousness time zone that we locked into. Because that's the way the surface energy then locked us down. To think that the earth is all and there's nothing else. That's why that's a violation. All right? But those fallen ones, they didn't set up their evolutionary order too. Like we've seen in the lesson where we talked about Cain being Master Mahan. Master Mahan is able to, the same way we can listen to the Holy Spirit, those empty vessels, they, those, those, they listen to the Spirit too. Those that don't believe in the Most High. All right? Or those that like that fallen vibration, they are entities that speak to them and give them revelations too. The same way we get revelations from the righteous side. The fallen side gives revelations. All right? A lot of the technology of death, these mad scientists, yeah, they receive revelations that get them to make these things. All right? It's a spiritual war. But the only thing, they blind to the spiritual war as a and their body is just being used as a host to get work done for the dark side. Oh, let's keep going. Verse 40. It was also revealed how the human mind is able to open up within the sea crystal third eye a time warp area of consciousness through which it too can work directly with the higher evolution. In the Sanskrit text, the text of the Rig Vedic hymns to the sun, and in the Persia Napamarita Sutra, we are given knowledge of how the human vehicle, the human vehicle works as a biotransducer system, which is racing against electrochemical destruction by the consuming energies of the sun. And these texts explain how the human vehicle is just one kingdom to be explored by the greater kingdoms of life. All right? So we're supposed to learn this vehicle and use it to the fullest while we are in it. And then we are supposed to move on. All right? Move on to the Merkaba vehicle, the light body vehicle, on to our next assignment. You're supposed to conquer this flesh. Learn all about it, how to use it, all right? To upgrade the things on the earth, to heal the things on the earth, to renew the minds of the people on the earth. But the human vehicle is just one kingdom to be explored by the greater kingdoms of life. For in these texts, we are told that our human kingdom is transformed from time to time into kingdoms of light and remade into new star vehicles. We are told in the Tibetan text of the Ben Shub Sins the Pa Sapad Palajakpa had the proper repetition 
of the sacred words allows for enlightened compassion. So how the proper repetition of mantras allow for enlightened compassion and love so that the three jewels, the biological body, the mental body, and the spiritual body, or the three bodies of Buddha are fused together. The Chinese oracle bones speak of the myriads of celestial beings who share the same body of life experience and can participate through the body of man so that he can experience the speech of the higher worlds. When we see some of them statues in India where you see a being that got maybe multiple heads and multiple hands and multiple feet. Yeah, it's speaking on the multiple aspects of the being. All right, it's not just one being within the body, it's multiple, like we just read, the myriad of the celestial beings who share the same body of life experience. All right, we multidimensional beings, but we didn't just got trapped into one aspect of our being. 44, when you use Egyptian, Hebrew, Sanskrit, Tibetan, Chinese words to prime the thought vibrations to flow into your third eye area, the languages will open channels of crystalline vibration within you so that your body can work directly with the higher intelligence through telethought communication. All right, and that's one reason that they made sure the Adamic seed don't know any of these languages. Don't know nothing but English, all right? Because as we learn, our older languages that all stem from us, then it, allow, it will allow us to connect back mentally to a different vibration, all right? And a lot of the words that we have now we, we didn't have all of these negative vibrating words in our own languages that we got in this English language. And that's how the lesson when we did on how your words affect your DNA and everything. It's certain words in this language that we use now that we don't realize they keep us locked in a certain vibration. No matter how spiritual we think we are, some of the words that we consistently use keep us from being able to go to that next level, all right? Wordplay is everything. Verse 46, and the light which shines, which gives you light, is through him who enlightens your eyes, which is the same light which quickens or increases or elevates your understanding. The thought forms that are active with this evolution come only through the greater mind. But thought forms do not originate in the body or carnal mind of man, but only are received and stored in units of thought form potential. All right? Now let's go to page 207. Page 207. Key 204. Starting at verse 1. The sons of light project the geometries of creation or the images of creation into fourth dimensional space in order to code spiritual mankind. And it's speaking on the pictographs, the language of light that we didn't did lessons on. All right. So those on the other side of the veil project the imagery of creation into fourth dimensional space, which is the astral realm up here in order to code spiritual mankind into the fifth dimension, the next larger membrane of universes. The revealing of the codes of light extend through telethought communication, which is produced by the modulated of gravitational waves, meaning the higher frequencies that we carry. All right? Telethought communication, which is produced by the influence of the elevated vibration. The elevated vibrations carry the codings of light intelligence 
from the larger membrane of universes. You as a believer can receive these elevated waves, these elevated vibration factors that are sent from a higher evolutionary master intelligence of light. All right? The Elohim, the Banai Elohim, the Ascended Masters. This transmission of knowledge contains codes of light that give you the realization of God's purpose and recognition of where we are in relation to the larger evolving universe. That's why those that reject the ongoing prophecy like we read in the beginning, they got no idea of where we are in relation to the larger evolving universe. All right? They don't know that the cycle of time we in, we towards the end cycle of time. They don't know that this is the 2012 that the Mayans and the ancient cultures talked about. They don't know that the timeline has been altered by 10 years to throw off the prophecies. All right? Because they're not going through the other books of scripture. Page 256. Verse 12. Now at the end of this cycle, we are seeing the second Adamic man being made through the visitation of the Lords of Light. All right? And just talking about in Corinthians, the first Adam and the second Adam. All right? The second one is remade into the image of the original Adam Tadman. All right? We're going back to the light. At the end of this cycle, we are seeing the second Adamic man and woman being made through the visitation of the Lords of Life, meaning their connection to those on the other side because they connected with the spirit. So the higher entities are able to code them and elevate them. Being made through the visitation of the Lords of Life or the higher intelligence, which reprograms us because we had lost our conceptual apparatus of the telethought communication. All right? When you're able to hear the spirit and know that it's a message coming from those on the other side, that's the beginning of reactivating your telethought communication. All right? That's the difference. And when you learn how all of the books takes that we got to learn to listen to the spirit within. But the only way to listen to the spirit within, you got to start to guard the portals, the block. The outside interference. They clear your mind, clear your thoughts. And that's part of what the mantras, <clears throat> the mantras do. The mantras help clear your mind. All right? If you ever want to get to a point where you got just that. Like some people go to meditate, meditate and they can't clear their mind. Their thoughts are consistently running. Chant a mantra. All right? Chant you a mantra for a few minutes. And your thoughts, all of the thoughts are going to subside. And you're just going to have clearness. All right, and then you can go into your meditation. Sometimes while you meditate, you can chant the mantra. While I'm meditating, in the background of my mind sometimes, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Keep my mind at peace. Since he has lost, the original seed has lost the ability to reconcile multi-dimensional levels of consciousness programming, the Elohim take over and program the survival mechanisms in the second Adamic man, the spiritual Adamic man's identity patterns, so that he can go back into the light form of the Adam Carab mind. All right, now let's go to page 469, key 313. Verse 1, this key explains how the people of light, the second Adam, the people of light, are polarized by means of a higher radiation of light projected into their third eye area. That sacred kiss that we read about, that eye of horse that's placed on our mind's eye area. This allows them to see beyond the limitations of the visible light, typically of our system of relativity. In order to accomplish this, 
man will be given, depending upon his capacity for wisdom, the ability to connect the present network of consciousness with the next universal network that is compatible with the education of his soul. This connection is done through telethought communication, which allows man to communicate with other galactic regions and even regions of hyperspace intelligence, meaning intelligence existing beyond our three the dimension, all right, meaning we can connect with those on the other side. Therefore, all right, pause. So, if you see where it says we can connect with those beyond our dimension, when the second atom is raised up and spiritually you are open, you will be able to connect with the brothers and sisters also that are open to where we'll get to the point to where we'll be able to communicate with each other. No matter where we at on this earth sphere, all right? So if I wanted to talk to somebody on the, I'm on the East Coast, I want to get at one of y'all on the West Coast or one of y'all on the other side, the Eastern part of the earth, I could be able to do it through telethought communication as we all increase and get opened up to that next level, all right? As we filter out the falling vibrations of our mind, we get reprogrammed by those on high. All right. Therefore, telethought communication is the ability to penetrate the different energy fields by means of a superior mental energy via a clear signal, a clear signal. And that's the that's the key aspect, a clear signal. A lot of us do not have clear signals, so we can't receive nothing. You got to have peace and you got to have a clear mind. Focus through the mind's eye, which is directly connected with the elevated vibrations. All right. Verse 10. Under certain low light conditions, calmly at night, the penile gland becomes more sensitive. Sunlight decreases enzyme activity. So don't listen to them Negroes talking about Go out in the sunlight and charge up your third eye. No, they false teaching. Sunlight decreases enzyme activity. Therefore, in the proper light environment, the penile gland has a unique transmitting apparatus, which can be used to influence enzyme actions throughout the body. Specifically, in telethought communication, the light which activates the penile gland is the limitless light and not the conventional light of the sun. It's the eternal light, which is the and not the conventional light of the sun, which is destructive to the memory mechanisms necessary to work with intelligence beyond our spectrum. Verse 16. This key teaches that the third eye is a light receptor which can be coupled to an energy from outside our present known framework, meaning outside of the 3D realm. Light is the grid through which and by which all higher forms of energy are transduced. Light is the grid through which and by which all higher forms of energy are transduced so that man may receive them. This light grid allows the third eye to use elevated vibrations, higher frequencies, as a means of modulating language in such a way that man's consciousness, consciousness is greatly transformed. Thus, the higher evolution through their thought forms of light can reprogram man as a biotransducer subsystem through his own activated light network grid of communication by the force of elevated consciousness, elevated frequencies. Verse 22, you, us, we are a sender and receiver like a radio crystal. You can actually place your consciousness on a wavelength 
and project your thoughts by modulating and demodulating your brain signals according to the communication network. Higher intelligence and telethought communication with your mind's eye creates what Metatron calls inductive links between the thought forms of the higher evolution in your mind, providing immediate contact with the higher evolution. Accordingly, the human mind is preset in the primary stage of creation to respond favorably to a higher language system of life. This higher language system is activated within the human mind through polarized mental contact. All right, meaning you have to be aligned to that high vibration. Polarized mental contact for inductive links. The language of telethought transmission contains the rebirth signals from structures in deep space which are fused with the chemistry of our biological system to educate our consciousness to understand communication from beyond our present level of reality. All right, we train through the spirit is what it's saying. Telethought transmission must take place because the preciseness of biological signals in the human body does not allow man to organically become in tune with the many levels that are necessary to work with different biological information systems which share the same life space as man but exist on different levels of biological enumeration or different levels of life systems such as those on the other side of the veil. Hence, the preciseness of biological language Carnal language prohibits the meandering between levels and planes of created consciousness reality because the biological languages are based on locked-in information, which does not permit creative interference between different consciousness layers. All right, and that's part of the reason when you learn to pray, you have to stop talking out loud and talk in your mind. All right, don't pray out loud. Pray in your mind, all right? In your mind's eye, spirit to spirit concept, all right? Learn to pray inside. Use the voice within, all right? Because it's gonna start to open you up differently. Thus, telethought communication provides a superior lettering using primal divine letters, AKA pictographs, which allow for biological reprogramming between layers of consciousness. All right, like the pictures that we see, all right, that we didn't receive in the lessons we did on pictographs, all right, like the ones that the brother sent us, and I showed different ones how they look like 3D pictures, but they align our consciousness as you sit and think on them, all right, you receive certain signals, all right, and here go two more that the brother sent me recently, all right, and what you start to see. It, it sends a, a, a message to you, all right, depending on what you see, all right? You may see the image of the dove, the bird, which is the spirit, and then the other one, you may see that spirit, that same dove lingering with a warrior, all right? And we know what the, what the dove represents, all right? We did lessons on the return of the dove, the return of the spirit. But pictographs allow for biological reprogram reprogramming between layers of consciousness because they transmit messages to us through the images. This method of communication provides the capacity for information transfer through these projected geometries of light which take the ambiguity out of a sound vibratory language and give language a greater meaning and versatility for diversification and function in life. Hence, telethought communication is also able to directly imprint super biological instructions which are projected into the body of man in order to permit the appropriate biological reprogramming. 
If man can work with the new light inputs of the higher orders of intelligence, he can begin to induce enzyme reactions with combined delta and alpha levels of thought. All right, and remember the lesson we did on the DNA and the consciousness. This is tying right into that same thing. All right, if we can work with the new light inputs, that language of light, the pictographs, listening to the spirit, those on the other side, if we can work with the new light inputs of the higher orders of intelligence, we can begin to induce enzyme reactions with combined delta and alpha levels of thought so as to direct our consciousness beyond the body. Once you have been polarized by light patterns and can receive telethought communication, your biological form may appear the same, but your body can work with multiple biological environments and this three-dimensional layer of physical reality, meaning you can work with those on the other side of the veil, all right? In co-participation with the light, you can create materializations, biogenesis from other consciousness layers. The generation of life from non-living material, the amplification of human strength, etc. You hear that? The amplification of human strength. The generation of life from non-living material. Meaning the generation of life from spiritual matter. And telethought communication with non-physical worlds, there is no time lag. The processes of the brain are instantaneous. Provided the third eye network is compatible with the energy body, the energy vehicle, the Merkaba. The mind, in so far as it is communicating through mass perception, the mass of the physical energy fields is limited to duration. However, in so far as it is communicating through non-physical threshold, meaning through the mind's eye, through the portal that connects to the other side, it is limited only by sequence and thought forms. That's why we had the lesson telling us about connecting with the elevated thought forms. Those lower vibrations will limit our sequence of thoughts. This means with the proper thought forms, there is no limitation to telethought communication provided the sender and the receiver have compatibility, meaning they on the same vibration, all right? If we on the same vibration, that's how those in Zion are gonna be separated, all right? Cause they gonna be working on the same compatibility level. Cause we all gonna be the went through the same steps to get coded from on high so that we can connect with those on the other side due to us being able to listen to the spirit within and continuing to receive the ongoing prophecy of lessons that's been given to us through all of the different scriptures to open us up and to give us more of the best food that we can get, which is knowledge of self. Knowledge of self gives you knowledge of the Godhead. All right, knowledge of self is knowledge of the light. Because we are a drop from the supreme. All right? Peace.